What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the GPS Podcast, Grow Your Passion into Success, where we give you the roadmap. I have my lovely, beautiful co-host here with me today. How are you feeling, Blue Bang? <laughs> You're such a lame brother, just so you know. But I feel pretty good. How about yourself, brother? I'm good. How was your week? It's, my week was wonderful. What'd you do? Did you do some travel or something? I always travel for work, but that's Where'd not you? here nor there. Where you was at? Where you was at? Yeah, where you, you was at? You done here? See how I get done, y'all? Somebody had done you. I went there before. <laughs> yeah, I you went there before. Yeah. Okay. I okay. enjoyed my weekend. What'd you do? I got my feet rubbed. Who rubbed your feet? Where was I at? Um, you were at the foot of the bed, I think. I was next to the person doing it. <laughs> I'll be letting some stuff slide, y'all. I swear. That would be a really nice three. three. Wow. wow. I can't say that on camera. Did somebody just say we're supposed to? Alright, y'all. What it was this mad? other? I heard somebody rub both feet at the same time. It was this other couple that owned a school for children. It's not us. <laughs> we don't own a school. We don't have any national school for children. Why not? It's called Kikafer's Academy. Why not? Huh? Why not? Just because I want both my feet rubbed at the same time. Wow, y'all. Like, what is really? I don't know what happened here. I thought we had a topic for tonight. Maybe I don't know. I was trying to see how this woman's uh. What happened to my... Oh, I had a, I had a replacement co-host tonight because my spouse couldn't make it, y'all. So I want to introduce y'all to Kiki. Uh, <laughs> Kiki's going to be here with us tonight. She's going to be replacing my wife until she gets better. She must be sick in the head or something. So I'm going to let this woman rock for my wife instead. What, Kiki, how do you spell that? K-E-K-E or K-I-K-I? K-I-K-I. Okay, Kiki. Like a Kiwi, but with two Ks. Or like a... Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, y'all. We back with another episode. GPS podcast. We're giving you the roadmap. We're giving you that free game. And today's topic of discussion is? Today's topic of discussion, we're talking to parents specifically. If you don't have no children, take note, because one day you're going to have children, hopefully. True. We're talking about the secrets revealed, raising a child prodigy. Assuming we're raising a child prodigy. That's assuming we're raising a child prodigy. Now, I, hold on. I got my phone. Can you, look, hold on, can you do it? Because my phone is on airplane. Can you look up the definition of prodigy? Sure. I don't know if we actually raising a child prodigy or not. <laughs> She's smart, though. She's very smart. I'm going to see. What's the definition of prodigy? I think every child could be a prodigy. I just think it's all in your perspective. You know? But I think every child has the potential. What prodigy. Is that? Prodigy. A person, especially a young one, endowed with exceptional qualities or abilities. Oh, yeah, we're raising a prodigy there. All right, be prodigy. <laughs> Duh, really? Yeah, it just, it just hit me. Mob be prodigy, you know? True. Raising a child prodigy. All right, we own a school, Kika First Academy for Entrepreneurs, grades K through 12. We have students across the country, and it's an interesting topic for us because before we had a school, people always used to ask us, what are y'all doing to raise your child? She's so <laughs> smart. And I'm just going to give y'all a game up front. We, it's no secret, we just invested time. True. I mean, I could. It's not. It's not that much more deep. Like we put time into her. We we put. We invested time. Did we do anything special? No. Because the time we took to educate her is time that we took to educate her. I mean, that's it. Like that's the gist of it. When my daughter was born, she came from the hospital. The day she came home, we put her in front of the TV and had her watching so your baby can read. Like the first day she came home, she probably was still asleep. Eyes probably didn't even work yet, but subconsciously she was soaking it up. Like, we made her fall in love with, with learning. And you do that by investing time. That's that's it. Like, you know, now, some people might gonna say we capping, but my wife's Facebook page has proof. My page <laughs> had proof, but it got deleted, y'all. So I lost all my proof, but. Why would somebody lie about that, though? I don't know, you know how folks on the internet is. Oh, they just capping to make themselves, you know, I don't, you know, I'm just trying to let people know it's legit. So I remember there's a video of my daughter that, of me, me and her, well maybe not now, and we used to make education fun. So I remember one day I was teaching her the continents, and she had to take the animals from each continent. She would jump off of the chair, and be like a rhinoceros, and she'd be like, Africa! And she would like smack Africa with the rhinoceros, she'd be like, they have rhinoceroses! Right, because she could really talk well as a two-year-old. Like she, she was always able to articulate herself. We just took time. We did 30 minutes of school with our child every day. Every day, without fail, or more. But the 30 minutes is really all you need to make sure you're doing something, reading, counting, learning, math. And why why, why have this episode? Because we got a school. 
Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all parents that be violating. So I'm going to spill the beans today. I ain't going to say y'all names, but I could. But I got to spill some tea. All right. There's things you see inside of school that you shouldn't see. And most of the time, our children are all prodigies, but the parents. Talking to y'all parents. I'm about to talk real spicy to y'all. It's about to get real spicy in here. Okay. If y'all got indigestion problems, you might want to. It's about to get spicy in here. Parents, what's good with y'all, man? Like what y'all, what y'all being on, parents? What y'all, what y'all really being on? Can I, can I, can I, can I tell real stories from our school? I mean, like, what can I do to stop you? I think I had COVID at the time. I think I got COVID at the time, and I'm at home sick. You know, my wife called me and she like going off. I'm like, yo, baby, what's going on? She's, she going in. She said, we have a child who's a freshman in high school who came to, first of all, he, he didn't show up to school for two months. So we like investigating, like, yo, truancy, like, yo, where's this boy's, where's this boy at, right? The mama like, oh, he got stuck out of state. I'm like, you know, <laughs> just not even as a parent, it's an individual. If you have a child that gets stuck out of a state, <laughs> your first question is going to be how? Like, how does this happen? When you say he got stuck out of the state, like, did you take him out of the state? Like, how, he just got on the bus and left? Like, what happened, right? So many questions unanswered. She said, no, I know exactly where he at. He in Mississippi. Mind you, we in Illinois. Okay, well, how did he get to Mississippi? She just got on the bus. <laughs> I'm like, do we got a job? No. Because he's a freshman. He, don't, he can't work. How did he get to Mississippi? Oh, he went to go visit his people for a party. So you, your 14-year-old son went to a party in Mississippi on the bus? Two months ago? It doesn't concern you that he hasn't been in school for two months? He's already behind. True. Nah. N-A-H. Nah. With the, the with extra H's. Like, it just is what it is. So, in this true story that actually happened, he comes back to school. When I got COVID, I'm not there, but my wife is calling me. And she's going off. He comes to school with no books and a blanket. 14-year-old. A blanket. Like a security blanket. So, he had a cell phone too. Oh, he had a cell phone. My man gets in class, there's cameras, wraps up in the blanket, <laughs> probably sucks his thumb, probably, start playing on his phone. So, my G, you didn't tell me you were behind when you got to school. You missed two months of school, and now you come to school and wrap up in your blanket and play on your cell phone? Now, I'm mentioning this story because. As the teacher slash educator slash administrator, it's a difficult thing to deal with when you want to call the parents for backup. True. And you like, yo, when I get your parents involved, it's going down. Right. And the parents like, what's the problem? <laughs> Fam, you don't see a problem with your son not having any books and just having a blanket? First of all, he's 14 with a blanket. Why does little boy got a blanket? Not a little boy. So, so yeah, he came to school, but ultimately, what's the point to the... My point is that... that we have to do better as parents. As parents, we got to do in better. In investing in our children. And investing in our children. Simple things like, making can't go to school without any books. Or just making them be in school. Just making them be in school. Right? I agree. In order to develop a child prodigy or raise a child prodigy, like even before... Samaya so came to even before we started our school, like we were invested in her education. She's always been a straight A student. She's always loved learning. She's she'll go read books on her own, do research on her own to this day. But honestly though, I think that yes, we poured a lot into her, but I think that we just like We got lucky. We rolled the dice like God, give us a seven. I don't know if luck is Boom. a word. I wasn't gonna use the word luck, but I mean we've just been blessed. Like I, we 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 couldn't have asked for a better child. Like she's intelligent. Um, she got the head on her shoulders. She's a We're gonna bring her as a guest on the on the podcast. Sure. You know, she's you know, she's kind to others. Yeah, she has her flaws, she's still a child, she does things she's not supposed to do, but I mean, she's been great. Now granted she hasn't become a teenager yet, so it could it could all go sideways at thirteen. It could all go down she a teenager, but the first 12 years has been a blessing. So, okay, but here, okay, think about this, right? Like, so the, her picking up a book and reading it on her own, like, other than pouring into her when she was one, two, three, by the time she was like six, 
She was good. Yeah, it, it was coasting from there. It wasn't much Auto to put into her. Like, like she, sure, when she was six, I wouldn't have to make her read. Like, hey, Samaya, it's summertime. You can't just spend your summer watching TV. Go read a book. Come back and tell me what it's what's it about. So I mean, I guess stuff like that helped her as she gets older. Now she just read on her own, but she's been a blessing to be honest with you. But I, it's a blessing, and it's part. It's like fifty fifty. Part blessing, part what we poured into her in the first six or seven. Years. I mean, I see videos on like. On, on the internet or like children that, I just seen a um, video of a young boy who rode up on a bike and told this dude shut the F up and I'm thinking to myself like yo who taught somebody taught him that and I don't even taught him that because we all see stuff somebody co-signed and approved his behavior that that's good true like somebody told him like yo you can talk to adults like that because when I was younger if I would have told any adult in my neighborhood shut the F up I would have got dealt with men, women, older children I wouldn't even tell the older children that like it's it's respect levels of certain things. So, like, you know, I think that as parents, man, we got to do a better job parenting our children just across the board. Part of the reason I'm vested in having a school is like, yo, let me help in this process. Let me, because a lot of our parents didn't get parented, so they don't know how to parent. But you just got to, you got to break the cycle. Like, so many of our children suffer that don't have to suffer because we don't invest time in them. That's really the best investment you can ever make is your child. If you invest in your child, your child can get back to you times 10. But if you don't, whatever you, you know, whatever you put into that child, like, like you see those videos of, um, like moms, it'd be like a birthday party outside. Like the mom will be twerking on like, you know, like Elmo will come to the party and mama's outside twerking on so Elmo. Man, like you always gotta bring, like, what? You never seen the videos before? I ain't never seen a twerking mama. Okay, go to World before. Star Hip Hop right now. Well, how, go. how do you find, first of all, how do you Listen. find a woman at the gas station when you and your bins in a briefcase? That's the first problem from two episodes ago. Huh? It wasn't a gas station. We was in a neighborhood. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, I never seen them at a gas station. I just know, like, you know, where do you find these women to the hit women on you? find me? What you mean? <laughs> you still on they YouTube? Find, you two find. episodes later, off topic, talking about where these women come from. I was just wanting to know. They recognize a real one. Like, if, you know what I'm saying? They like, yo, that dude, that... Yeah. Or do yeah. you find them twerking on videos for the first of all, okay. birthday party? To stay on topic, I've seen videos of like folks like it's all kind of videos like children's birthday parties out of control. Mm -hmm. Like folks high drinking, twerking on Elmo, Mickey Mouse getting it popping. You like dang, like what are you teaching the children? You know what I'm saying? If Mickey Mouse is getting it in, then the child don't stand a chance. Like I just seen a video, okay, bring it back even more. I'm gonna tell you why this is damaging for our young people. Just seen a video of all young children. Couldn't be no more than 11. Everybody got glizzies, extendos. They in the video pointing, pointing weapons like they, yo, who wrote up on us? We gonna smoke something. We gonna lay something down. Where, where you get the mentality from, right? Yes, our, it's our environment. It's our neighborhood because our neighborhoods are toxic. We've made our neighborhoods like that. Or our neighborhoods have been made that way from social engineering. But when young people see certain people, young people want to be what they see. And as parents, it's your job to like direct them so they don't see the wrong stuff or they're not inf overly influenced by the wrong stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna get influenced by the local whoever. And then that's what our young people become. Like the shooters right now is like 11 and 12 years old. Like the folks out killing folks, these are like the child soldier ages. Like these are the young people because that's what they see. So they watch the videos, all they see the videos of young folks out mm -hmm. doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? They don't let the GDs in the door, but now the nine-year-old sing. We don't, they don't let the GDs in the door, and now he nine. And you talking about GDK? He popping a grown man, but he's seen it from. He's seen it in his environment. So, like at the end of the day, you know, as parents, we got we got to look at how we how we grow our children. And if we grew up in poverty, you know, it's a saying that says, if if you didn't come from a rich family, then a rich family must come from you. And parents got to look at it like, yo, if I grew up poor, I don't want my children to go through that same thing. Or at least I would think as a parent, you don't want your child to go through the same thing. If I grew up poor, I'm like, yo, how can I do something to take myself out of poverty, take my, my mother, retire my mother, make sure my, my wife and family don't live in poverty? Like, what can I do? It got it got to be a play. You got to be something you work at. But most of our children, they don't think like that because the parents don't think like that. And as parents, we just got to do better. So it's raising child prodigy about whether or not your child struggles or has to deal with the same struggles that you had to deal with as a child because i don't i don't um, see raising a child prodigy like it i don't think I it's think, so funny i don't think i think all children are prodigies at birth right 
and then life happens. That's really sweet of you. Uh, all children got the potential at birth. Nobody, no child is born knowing nothing. The children are born crying. They don't. They have to learn. But look how quick a child learns. Like children start crying, True. whatever. They learn how to get potty trained in a few years. They learn how to walk. They learn how to talk. They learn how to communicate, express themselves. And if they're born in Japan, they learn Japanese. If they're born in America, they learn English. If they're born in Spain, they learn Spanish. Like they adapt to their environment quickly. So children can learn. But again, it's what parents. What is it they're learning? Huh? What is it they're learning? That's they're learning all kind of stuff. Like think about it like this, right? The black community is special. Because most other communities don't have a lot of the same issues that we have on a massive scale, right? Like, of course, no other community's been enslaved for 400 years, right? So that's this, there's that 400 years of slavery thing. We can't just jump over the whole 400 year slavery thing. It's, it's kind of a big deal, right? The whole whipping, um, whipping us and raping us and buck breaking and kidnapping, like just all the torture, like all that plays a role. Trauma's passed down. So I get it, trauma is passed down. But we got to get to a point where we're like, yo, I don't want to live like this. You know what I'm saying? Better. We got to do something better. We got to not let our children come to school with blankets and no blankets. Like, okay, another real story. My wife will co-sign this. We had a little boy in our school who had anger management issues. He went from 0 to 100 extremely quick. When I say 0 to 100, I mean he could be smiling, laughing, having a good day. He could be like, it's time to sit down. It like <laughs> instant Goku. What did you say to me? <laughs> He's powered up. He's flying through school like zero to a hundred. Is this go here, Goku, or the? No, this is Super Saiyan. This is God level. Okay, God level. he instantly is on God level Super Saiyan from just playing with other children, right? So I'm not gonna call his business out there, but I'm bringing this little boy up, and I mention this because he, he ends up getting trouble in our school, and we call one of the relatives, and we like we having a conversation, and we like, yo, this is what happened because they called us like what happened at school, so we trying to tell him. In the background, at first you hear this little boy laughing, but then I hear my wife say, well, let me tell you what he did. Then in the background I hear, she's lying! She's dead, I'm gonna kill her, she's lying, I'm gonna kill her, talk about me, I'm gonna I'll blow everything up! Like, yo! I don't, think you <laughs> I don't know what, I don't know exactly what he was saying, but he was wilding, so I'm like, talking to the parent, like, I know you hear that in the background. Like, I know right, like, I'm on the phone, but like, I know you see Shorty Wildin' right now. I'm like, oh, he's just upset. No, ma'am. When I get upset, <laughs> you feel me? When I get upset, it's like, yo, listen, man, that's not normal behavior. He went from zero to 100, like, like he just snapped. And for the parent, I'm like, yo, you gotta give him some help. Like, he doesn't need any help. No, he needs help, help, help. Like. Boy running through our school banging his head on glass windows, like not even realizing if you bang your head hard enough on that glass window and it goes through, the glass up high is gonna come down and chop, man. It's, it's over for you. But you can he's so enraged you can't even see it. So I mean, man, as parents, we gotta be also be realistic, right? And I, these are a lot of real stories from our school, but you just gotta be realistic. A mother comes to us and she like, yo, my daughter, I want her to enroll in your school. She get a lot of fights at her school. We're like, why is she fighting? Let girls just be picking on her. Nah, it's, we all know children pick on Absolutely. all the children. Absolutely. Children are really cruel. Children are, children are the most cruel people. <laughs> very cruel. When I was a child, y'all, I go. You were very cruel. Kind of like how you were a mini poo. From, from Man, here. I don't know about the mini poo, but we did. I was one of those people. That, I was a roaster. Like, that was my thing. I was a roaster. I, I did some roasting. So, what point was I trying to make here? You were talking um, about the young lady. Also, I'm guessing you were talking about the young lady who couldn't read. Oh, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. The mother was like, yo, my daughter's an angel. She's only getting in fights because children are jealous of her. Bet. <laughs> so she comes in, we give her like a spelling test. She recognizes the word cat out of 100 words. So we conclude she can't read anything. Like, sound this letter out. It's the letter A. She's like, A makes a cute, cute, cute sound. We're like, nah, shorty. A doesn't make a cute, cute, cute sound. Not in English, not in Spanish, not in Japanese, and he never makes a good cookie sound. <laughs> oh no, I'm trying to tell a story, but give it some humor because it's a sad story. So come to find out, she cannot read at all. Like 100%, she's 12. But the mother's telling us like, yo, she's on point. Like she just needs a little help. I'm like, she needs a little love. It, all we can do is put it in our kindergarten class and she got to start over. She can't read. She can't even sound letters out. Like, you know how like, some people be like, T-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-t-
Not granted, the city we live in, education is not the best. Matter of fact, it's one of the top three um, worst educations in the country. But you can't blame 12 years on the school district. True. At some point in time, as the parent, you got to be like, you yeah. got to like, like, just imagine, hey, Susie, go get me the cat in the hat came back. And she come back with a Stephen King book. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> what happened? I wanted the cat in the hat. She come back with Stephen King. Oh, it didn't dawn on you. That she couldn't differentiate between a cat in a hat and a Stephen King book. One's a novel, one is a blue book. You know what I'm saying? Hop on pop or something. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy, man. You can't blame that on a school district. That's because as a parent, we haven't invested the time that we need to into our children. Like, all of our children are prodigies, but as parents, we gotta, we gotta, like, the moment you have a child, all the stuff you wanna do in your youth, you gotta balance it out, man. You can still live your life and do you, but you got to be cognitive. Like, yo, I got another person here who didn't ask me to come here. They came here probably because I was having a good time. I mean, that's how we get here, that's right? Truth, right? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with the process, you feel me? That's, that's this is episode will have to be, I guess, for the Exactly. <laughs> the process. <laughs> I'm just saying. Everybody out there can co-sign. The process is fun, but afterwards, you got to deal with the real-life situations of you did it, but now... Here's this child, and you gotta to be fair to the child. You just gotta give that child a fair chance. Like mm -hmm. if you if you don't if you don't pour into that child when they're younger, when they get older, what you expect them to do? Like they can turn around on their own, you know. But it's they have a better fighting chance if you pour into them. And I think in a lot of other communities, they pour into their children more than we pour into our children. Specifically, some of us do. Some of us are great parents. Some of us, just based on my experience of running a school. Some of us have this thing messed up. Like we just, we just gotta do better. We gotta do better as a community, man. Like we started a school to help those families who didn't invest in their children early on. We was like, yo, we're gonna help you catch up. However, catch up means you had to start the race. <laughs> like, you can't be like, yo, put me in a race, coach. Like, you're not even started yet? Like, cause it's it's unfair, it's like it's not fair. What if we put a 12-year-old in our kindergarten class? Now all the kindergarten parents complain and they're like, yo, we got a 12-year-old in the class because she's, mo she's more mature, but she just does, she's not educated. So for me, you know, part of raising a child prodigy, our biggest secret is that we invest the time. Like, I don't, did, what, what do you think? Time, that's it. We took time with her to say the ABC. We took time with her to talk to her. We took time to play at the party. I agree. Like it, I think the world would be a better place if parents spent more time with their children. And husbands weren't mini poops. Yo, I don't know what she's talking about with these mini poo thing, but remember, she's the one who called him Willard. So I just want y'all to know for the record that when y'all see this Willard thing go up, all right? But anyway, I'm just trying to make this point. I think one episode we're going to bring our daughter on to the podcast just so you can see. It's not just our daughter, though. I'm a thugger worker. Okay, it's not just our daughter. Apparently, she's a thugger wugger. This is my thugger wugger. A thugger wugger. Okay, good. Don't look for that in the dictionary. <laughs> That won't be there, but you know, I wanted to bring on just so it can be seen for parents. Though, like parents, always amaze at my daughter when they meet her, and I don't think that she's any different than any other child. We just poured a lot of time into her, and we talked to her like I never, I never Google Gaga got my daughter. Did you ever do that, Mark? No. I always talked to her like an adult. Like she was young, and she'd be like, "Dad, I'm flabbergasted." I'm mm -hmm. like, "I think our daughter's sick." You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to. Jump on WebMD to see, like, my daughter got flabbergasted, y'all. Like, I gotta look this up, you feel me? Like, because she's just, that's how she's been. But we, I always talk to her like an adult. You know, my wife got a video on her page, and she's like, are you going to go to college? And she's like, yes, mother, I'm going to college. And she's like, how old is she in that video? Two or three? Maybe about two or three. Like, two or three years old. And then she's still a three-year-old. She asked her, like, yo, what are you going to study at school? She's like, computers. She's like, and what else? She's like, using the potty. So, I mean, she's two. You got to use the potty, right? You do got to do that. And computers, right? <laughs> but my point is that we spent time, and a lot of times that's what it comes down to, man. Like, I understand children's friends gonna be influential, the media is gonna be influential, like all oh, TikTok, YouTube, all that stuff. But as a parent, you gotta make sure that we still have influence on our child's life too, because some of our children are gonna rebel against us. They most children get to a state where they rebel. I know I did. I got to stay. I started probably rebelling most of my. But like, think, so like about a year to <laughs> I start rebelling early, but I'm just right, saying, right. I'm just saying, rebellion, children go through rebellious stage because they got to test the waters. Like everything mom, dad told me, I want to see if it's true. 
That's why I said I don't know. Somebody's not a. You've been in your rebellious stage still, right? You said you never came out of it. What'd you say? You said your rebellious stage. It started at like three years old. You said it's still going on, right? See? Pretty much everything your parents taught you, you said was no good, right? Because I agreed. I was like, no, throw it all out, right? That didn't happen. <laughs> no, it didn't happen. I was confusing you with your sister then, my bad. Um, so, wow. <laughs> um, no, your younger sister, not the older one. Um, so, anyway, ha, 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 yo, okay. So, uh, I got my little rocks back here to throw at you. <laughs> so, all I'm saying is, y'all, you know, spend time, invest, invest time in your child, especially. Here's the kicker. We only got a couple minutes left. We got out of here. Here's the kicker. If you want your child to be in entrepreneurship, like surround your child around other entrepreneurs. If you want your child to be a pilot, surround them around pilots. If you want your child to be, you know, whatever, surround them around that. But whatever you have your child around, that's what they're going to look up to and want to be. It's like at the end of the day. I just seen a video of a little boy like in Jamaica who had it. It's on my phone right now. It's on my Facebook page. He had an entire song that he saw by heart that he wrote about school shootings. And you could tell his parents pour into him. Like the culture there. You could, you could just tell from watching the video, like, yo, this little boy is lit. He got an entire song memorized, and he's like, can't be no more than eight years old, maybe maybe younger than that. About school shootings? About, about school that. shootings. He got an actual song about school shootings. Like, it's lit, too. Like, I would put a beat to that. I'm buying it. Like, I'm confident. He ate. But you could tell he's around that environment where that's what people do. They sing songs. So my point is just for parents, like, yo, look at the environments you put your children into and make sure you invest time into your children. Otherwise, that prodigy, man, you can you can either grow the prodigy or you can let the prodigy die inside your child. It's up to us as parents. That's that's, that's my two cents. I'm, you know, that's my two cents. What you you got anything? We're getting ready to close out, but I'm just I'm trying to get parents some free game here. This is free game, and I know you want something deep. There's nothing deep. Just, just spend time. time with them. Spend time with them. Like I played PlayStation with my daughter when she was younger. We might play Mortal Kombat together. You feel me? But she got to do it with dad. <laughs> so, you know okay. so then I can explain to her like, see how he decapitated, you know what I'm saying, how he pulled the skull out, like that's just a video game. You don't want to do that. Exactly. Because <laughs> you don't you don't want your child finding squirrels like finish up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 you know, you don't want what to go if, that route. What if that what if Mortal Kombat influenced her to finish a squirrel? <laughs> <laughs> well then you probably raised a sociopath. And, <laughs> exactly. You gotta try again, but hey man, if you have five children, four out of five is still an 80%, you still gotta be. You feel me? So, I mean, are we still on a roll? You can still get into a good school with a B right, average. Right, right. Feel me? Hey, man. Hey, man. You got to do what you got to do in the main streets of Detroit. So, anyway, y'all, the box up. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Nothing. Good, we got to get out of here. We got to go. Parents, I need y'all to invest time in your child, man. Especially when you like, y'all don't put my child in your school. Trust me. We will not like allow your child in our school. Decapitating squirrels, all right? No squirrel decapitating. You on the playground. Look what I've done. Like, sorry, Timmy, you gotta go back to public school. <laughs> <laughs> so, this has been the GPS Podcast. Throw your passion to success. We'll show you the roadmap. Peace. Holla.